The Lord be with you. Thank you. Welcome to worship, especially, or including, uh, maybe especially, to those who take in our service electronically. We want to continue to record and broadcast our service. We know that for some, these days, that is the best method, and we will continue to. So therefore, I'll keep on saying what the hymn number is. We know that some folks at home are opening up the hymnal, singing along with us, so even though you already have it in front of you with the bulletin. Uh, I will keep on giving the hymn numbers. Last week, we weren't, we weren't able to have a fifth Sunday offering, so this first Sunday becomes a fifth Sunday. You've probably already seen there are some great receptacles at the doors to receive a special offering in support of our food pantry. So uh, please do so if moved and if able. Thank you. Our Larry Brandt golf outing is coming up in two weeks. It's all in support of scholarships for our youth as they go off for college. And uh, we just urge you to participate, whether it's actually golfing or it's giving in order that it can uh, uh, benefit more kids. Stop in the gymnasium entrance and see Carolyn. She's got a great table there and receiving donations and uh, signups for that. Next week, we're going to be receiving another special offering, and this one for our Central Illinois District Scholarship Fund. When men and women go into full-time church work, men becoming pastors, women becoming DCEs and teachers, they incur a big debt many times in order to take that extra schooling. Our scholarship fund through the district helps alleviate some of that. There are offering envelopes on the Welcome Center to receive special offerings next Sunday for that scholarship fund. And the perhaps best and biggest news is that tomorrow is the beginning of Sunday school and this, this coming week is uh, the beginning of Eagle's Nest classes here at our preschool. When Eagle's Nest is in session, you're going to see that we're going to have the entrances off of Cherry Street blocked off so the kids can spend more time outside with some learning and some recreation out there. So take note of the orange cones that block it off and come in please only off of Jefferson. And for Sunday school, come back tomorrow morning. Be a part of Sunday school. From kindergarten through adult, we're going to be learning the same lesson tomorrow, Genesis chapter 1 and 2. And I'm going to have a modified children's sermon. And no children are going to come up. In fact, I don't even know if we have any uh, really little kids. No, we do have some, don't we? Sorry. Um, in this service. But I'm going to talk to the kids and talk to us all a little bit about Sunday school and teachers. And we're all going to sing Jesus Loves Me because some families might be worshiping with us tomorrow morning by video. All of those are good announcements, but what you came for is worship. God's word, his grace, and his truth. And the first hymn is hymn 902. And when we get to that fourth verse, we'll stand in doxology to God. Welcome.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Sisters and brothers, upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God on high. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good proceeds, grant to us, your servants, your holy inspiration, that we may set our minds on things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Our Old Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7 through 9. So you, son of man, I have made a watchman for the house of Israel. Whenever you hear a word from my mouth, you shall give them warning from me. If I say to the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked to turn away from his way, that wicked person shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, that person shall die in his iniquity, and you will have delivered your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. 
Our psalm is Psalm 32, verses 1 to 7, read responsively. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed, Blessed is the man against, against whom the Lord, the Lord counts, counts no iniquity, iniquity and, and in whose, whose spirit there is, there is no deceit. For when I kept silent, my bones wasted away through the groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My strength was dried up as by the heat of summer. I acknowledged my sin to you, and I did not cover my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Therefore, Therefore let everyone who is godly offer prayer to you at a time when you may be found. Surely in the rush of great waters they, they shall not reach him. You are a hiding place for me. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. Glory, Glory be, be to, to the Father, Father and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Blessed is the one whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Our epistle reading is from Romans chapter 13, verses 1 to 10, and also the text for this evening's sermon. Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed, and those who resist will incur judgment. For rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Would you have no fear of the one who is in authority? Then do what is good, and you will receive his approval. For he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is the servant of God, an avenger who carries out God's wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection, not only to avoid God's wrath, but also for the sake of conscience. For the same reason, you also pay taxes. For the authorities are ministers of God, attending to this very thing. Pay to all what is owed to them, taxes, to whom taxes are owed, revenue, to whom revenue is owed, respect, to whom respect is owed, honor, to whom honor is owed. Owe oh, no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment, are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The day will come when we'll be inviting kids to come up and fill the chancel. But for now, a children's sermon that's partly to us in the pew, whether they're kids or not, or also to those who are watching at home and learning at home with mom and dad. How's school been going? Well, for those of you who are teachers, I realize it has been exhausting and strange, unprecedented, right? And for kids, it's probably been unprecedented, too, and exhausting and strange. Think about one of your favorite teachers when you were very, very young. Miss Cicerelli, that was a big name, when I was my kindergarten teacher. Miss Cicerelli, I thought she could do anything. Maybe you thought that, too, of a teacher when you were young. I saw it as Kathy, my wife Kathy, would meet kids who uh, she was teaching or had taught in previous years in kindergarten. They thought she walked on water, and to them, she was everything. Because teachers are powerful. And yes, as parents and grandparents, and all adults in the congregation, we're all teachers, and kids are looking up to us and learning from us. Tomorrow, we'll be thankful to have some of our Sunday school teachers standing here in the services 
We're going to ask them to make promises, to teach truth and grace to children. We're also going to bless them, encourage them, pray for them, because they need it. Sunday school, too, will be rather unprecedented this year. So will confirmation, as Jerry and I will begin teaching it here soon. But what we promise to do is to teach truth and grace to Jesus, uh, of Jesus to children. And I thought, let's sing, whether it's in the congregation or it's watching on video with kids at home, let's sing Jesus Loves Me. We all know the first verse of that good hymn, and, or that good song. Yes, Jesus loves me, and I know this because the Bible tells me so. I also jotted down a new verse that we can learn. I'll sing it, and uh, you can come back in on the chorus of it. A simple little verse that says simply this, Jesus gives us truth and grace so that all may see his face. We will listen to his word. There, his loving voice is heard. But let's start with singing the first verse. All of us, including you who are watching, and singing at home, Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Jesus gives us truth and grace, so that all may see his face. We will listen to his word, there his loving voice is heard. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Let's pray for all of our Sunday school kids, confirmation students, and their teachers. Lord Jesus Christ, you do show us truth and grace, and we need it. We need you. Bless the Sunday school children of our church, from kindergarten through adulthood, sitting at your feet to learn truth and grace. Strengthen our teachers, we pray, and thank you for their service. Bless them with joy and with insight into sharing your world and your word with others. And we pray you, Lord, to grow our faith and our knowledge that more may know through us that, yes, Jesus loves them, has redeemed them, and is the light of the world. It's in your holy name that we pray. Amen. Congregation, stand with me, please, and we'll sing the Alleluia's to greet the gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 18th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And calling to him a child, Jesus put him in the midst of them and said, Truly I say to you, unless you turn and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one such child in my name receives me. But whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world! 
for temptations to sin. For it is necessary that temptations come, but woe to the one by whom they come. And if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life crippled or lame than with two hands or two feet to be thrown into the eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It's better for you to enter life with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into the hell of fire. See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. For the Son of Man came to save the lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have gained your brother. But if he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if he refuses to listen even to the church, let him be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say to you, if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Be seated, please, to sing hymn number 966, the first two verses and verses 4 and 5.
Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. All roads lead to Rome. Maybe you've heard that phrase. I thought for a long time that it was an ancient phrase, maybe from the Roman Empire, trying to give this impression that in the days when Paul's writing this, the people would have said that all roads lead to Rome. But no, it's, it's a rather recent phrase, just about 300 years old. But I think that the purpose of it was to say that in those days of the Roman Empire, when Paul is writing this letter to these dear Christians in Rome, literally and figuratively, all roads led to Rome, this seat of power and responsibility. We weren't heading to Rome last summer. We were heading to the Black Hills of South Dakota to retrace the steps of one of our favorite places, one of our most consistent, repeating family vacations. We would take our kids when they were little with our pop-up camper out to western South Dakota to the Black Hills and camp outside of Custer State Park. And we would camp and hike and swim and sing and laugh. And last summer, we were privileged to go back to the same places, but this time with all of our kids and our grandchildren too. So we set out from Macomb last summer, from Effingham, Ammon and Troy, from Texas and from Minnesota, We hit the road and we all converged in South Dakota. But it didn't seem like all roads were leading to the Black Hills, to Custer. No, really what it seemed like, if you read the signs, was all roads led to Waldrug. If you've been there, you know what I mean. I've been told that if you go to Europe, if you go to Asia, you might come across a sign that says, so many miles to Wall Drug, and this abundance of all these signs, go to Wall Drug, go to Wall Drug, makes you go. And I can tell you, our family's probably been 10 times. Doesn't change throughout the years, and yet we keep on going back. And last summer, all roads led to, for a while, the kitschiness, the weirdness, and the wonderfulness of Wall Drug where you can get a five cent cup of coffee and a buffalo burger, where you can get your picture taken on top of a jackalope and beside a brontosaurus. Wall drug, you have to stop. And every time that we've been there, it doesn't change. And every time in a way, it both disappoints and thrills. But we made our stop, and then we kept going. All roads lead, well, last summer, to the Black Hills and to Custer State Park. But when Paul was writing, this epistle to which we've been giving our attention, both here in the church and in our homes, when Paul's writing this letter to the dear Christians at Rome, Literally and figuratively, all roads lead there. It's the nexus of power. Caesar is there. And the dear Christians who receive this letter are living in this tension. The tension of being dual citizens. They are citizens of Rome with all the privileges and responsibilities and burdens for Christians that are there. But they are also citizens of a kingdom that is perfect that is eternal and truly is the nexus of all authority and power. And they live in this tension and they need this letter from Paul where he's first emphasized justification, the declaration of sinners like you and me to be righteous before God only because of the death and resurrection of Jesus. And now beginning with chapter 12, we've said he's tipped into addressing our life of sanctification, how we grow in holiness, in following the Lord, in loving Him, and yes, 
living in horizontal relationship one with another. So today in Romans 13, he deals with earthly authority. He says those words, let everyone be subject to the earthly authorities because there is no authority not established by God. What he means is all authority is a reflection of the supreme authority. And these dear Christians are living in this tension that you live in too. This tension that exhausts you at times. The tension of trying to listen and decide, to pray and to persist. The tension of knowing that obedience is right and ultimate obedience is only owed to God. As the disciples said in Acts chapter 5, when there is a conflict between God and man, we must obey God rather than men. All earthly authorities, Paul says, have authority that is on loan to them, whether they realize it humbly or not. All authority flows from God, whether it's parents or it's pastors. The ultimate authority is the triune God who knows all things, is everywhere, and loves. Loves so much and so well that he uses all of his authority to take on flesh that can be pierced with nails. The word that had crawled creation into being became flesh and brought us grace and truth to buy fallen creatures like us and our fallen government. In this world and in this tension in which we live, I have at least two tendencies I know. It is to wander or to withdraw. On one hand, in the midst of the exhaustion of living in this tension, and it's such a fallen world, sometimes I want to wander. I want to just rebel and do what I think is best, which is not good. Or to withdraw. To just kind of step back and crawl under a rock and not participate and not listen and not care. But Paul says neither wandering nor withdrawing is our calling but rather faithful obedience, first and foremost to the one who holds all power and holding all that power who bought us with his blood. Faithful obedience to him always. And yes, as long as there is no conflict with God's law, obedience even to earthly authorities. All roads lead to Rome, not so much. And not all roads were leading to Wall, South Dakota last summer. We kept on going. We made it to Custer. We camped. We hiked and biked. We laughed and relived. And on the one Sunday morning that we were there in Custer, we went back to our Redeemer Lutheran Church one of our small sister congregations of a Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, went back because we'd gone there years and years before, repeatedly when we were camping out there. Some of the same saints were sitting in those pews and welcomed us. We went not simply to retrace, but to worship, recognizing that we are dual citizens of a marvelous nation with great freedoms and liberties. And we are citizens of the kingdom of God. And we owe to him our worship and we need from him his grace and truth. And so we sat in those pews those days with our kids and our grandkids and gave thanks to the supreme authority who bought us with his blood, who rose from the grave by his authority. We gave thanks that all roads lead not to Wall, not to Custer, not even to Rome or Washington or Springfield. All roads lead to the Lord of heaven and earth, 
And we come safely to him by his death and resurrection. We've come safely to his house again today to worship to him, to receive his word, and to give him our thanks. And yes, our faithful obedience. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses understanding keep our hearts and our minds safe in faith. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Stand with me please for the prayer of the church and let each petition of the prayers end with hear our prayer. Blessed Lord, you've promised that where two or three are gathered in your name, you are there, here in the midst of us. Hear the prayers of your people and grant our supplications. Lord, grant to your people courage, that with boldness we may speak your name in witness, and when necessary, warn sinners so that they may come to faith and repentance and so enjoy the forgiveness of sins. Give your church wisdom and strength by your Holy Spirit, that she may be steadfast and unmovable in your word and your truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, be present among your people to serve us with the gifts of your grace and grant that we may receive them with joy. Continue to give to us faithful pastors and church workers who minister to us in your name, who strengthen the faith and our life together. We rejoice with our brothers and sisters in Christ at St. John, St. John's Diedrich and St. Paul's Wheeler as they receive Pastor Herberts as their pastor in the coming month. Bless them and our walk together with them as the church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, give to us good and honest leaders who will govern according to your word and your will. Give us grace so that we may not, prevail, may not fail to pray for those who lead us, so that we would continue to act as good citizens and good neighbors one to another. Give peace to the nations. Bring an end to violence or prejudice and racism. Guide us to know and to respect all life from the infant in the womb, to the youth beginning maturity, to the mature and the aged. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you send rain upon the earth and you turn the seeds into plants rich with fruit for harvest. Accept our thanks and our praise for your continued goodness in providing a good harvest and food for us all. Give us wisdom so that we may use your resources wisely and may extend your care to those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You urge us to give special care and guidance to the young, to those new in the faith. We pray for our Sunday school and Sunday school teachers, for our preschool and our Eagle's Nest teachers and families. Give us grace so that we will not lead children into temptation or sin, but would guard their faith by making known to them the full counsel of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And you are the strength of the weak, the healing of the sick, the comfort of those who grieve. You are the peace of those who are near death. So hear us as we pray on behalf of Dick Hulscutter and Erica Hansen, Lois Kyle and Jan Pike, Vic Oakley and Rose Boggs, Dana Keller and John Romero, Sean Borland and Tim Mueller, Craig Wolf and Jeff Campton, Mike McWhorter and Bob Miller, Mary Wolfmeyer and Bertie Powell, Zach Fritcher, Lori Mayberry and Evelyn Shoemaker, Janet Brinkoff and Julie Scott, and these who in silence we name. And to them we add all the members of our armed forces, including Paul Smith and Nathan Vale, Aaron Smith and Bailey Longwell, Jason Meddy and Gabriel Walker, Jonathan Schutte and Henry Bielenberg, and all of the first responders of our community and our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
all these things. And whatever else you would have us pray, we pray in the name and for the sake of Jesus, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In our review of the catechism, we come now to the evening prayer. Luther wrote, in the evening when you go to bed, make the sign of the Holy Cross and say, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then kneeling or standing, repeat the creed in the Lord's Prayer. And if you choose, you may also say this little prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Then go to sleep at once and in good cheer. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Hymn 686.
with joy go in the peace of the Lord.